You're telling me that the only customization the most requested car in Forza Horizon 5 has is a taxi lamp? Ahoy there! I'm bored with Forza. I wish there was something to scratch my racing game itch. Now, oh, videos of that tanked. I beat it. It was a good time. Decent game, but I was told to quit before the end because of the rubber banding. I always say that I want to play this sometime, but I just never do. I just keep saying that many times. Ah, think, Squiddy, think! I love racing games, but it seems like they don't love me back. Modern racing games have been stagnant. They don't focus on keeping the player engaged, they don't have online stability, and they keep mounting technical debt with old game engines. They're bursting at the seams, but for all the wrong reasons. I mean, come on! FH5 carries engine bugs that have been there since the third game. The past few series haven't been very exciting because they're either focused on the two DLCs, recycling old content, or adding new content that I just don't care about. I'm in the camp that wanted motorcycles added to Forza, but the voice of the people chose the Nissan Suru for its authenticity. I can't blame them, but it's just another car I'm never gonna drive. I balked at trying Need for Speed Unbound because of the lack of content at launch, and because it's 70 effing dollars. And with word that developer Criterion would be getting put back on development duties for the Battlefield series, the future of the Need for Speed series is looking as bleak as the car industry. I also really want to play the Crew Motorfest for the motorcycles alone, but it's bound to the Epic Games Store on PC. And did you think you could get away from the Ubisoft launcher? Of course not. And don't even get me started on F1 bugs. It's uh, not just Checo, it's- OH MY GOD! <laughs> he got taken out by a driver underneath the track! This leaves me in a tough spot. There are a few racing games I've wanted to try, but they're all modern games. Which means they all suck. This left me retreating to the past for some of that good old PS2-era copium. Kicking things off in no particular order is Midnight Club 3 Dub Edition on the original Xbox. This is one of the games I got when I bought my first Xbox weeks before it died in 2021. And what a damn good game to leave a first impression. It's the first game that could ever compete with Need for Speed games of the time. It's not as good as most wanted, but it was better than Carbon. Plus, it's got Detroit as one of the three cities. I always say I want to get back into this game, and I never do. I don't know why. Maybe it's the difficulty, maybe it's the Xbox controllers, maybe it's my lack of attachment to the system. I'm not doing myself any favors by not playing this. Next is Ridge Racer 5, the first PlayStation 2 game ever released. I did get enjoyment from this racer from 2000. It's got that arcade style of gameplay that I grow to miss by the day where you drift around corners to handle. I loved it. That is, when I got used to the fact that there was no analog control. It's got an upbeat vibe to it, though not as cheery as Wave Race. But because this is the first PS2 game ever, it's got some early PS2 game quirks. It fits on a CD, which means there's not as much content. The soundtrack is... okay. Having listened to the soundtrack to Ridge Racer Type 4, it can't compete, but it's got some good songs there. But there's just not enough content. That describes what my entire experience with Ridge Racer 5. Not enough for me. Fun while it lasted, but I want something more. Oh, and Ai Fukami's character model is undeniably detailed for the time, but she's no replacement for Reiko. It 
Introducing the game that got me into this mess in the first place. Tokyo Extreme Racer Drift 2, also known as Kaido Battle, Togi no Densetsu. On paper, this game should have checked all the boxes. It's got a large list of Japanese and world cars that would make most enthusiasts swoon. It's got car customization, it's got courses where you can drift down the mountains of Japan, and plus how can you not appreciate a game where you can drive a Daihatsu Midget 2? Apparently this game garnered a cult following over the years. I'm not one of them, sadly. I got my expectations too high when I discovered how twitchy and overly sensitive the handling model is. This is definitely a racing game by Genki, that's for sure. I just can't get a feel for it. I even tried holding the left analog stick towards the top or bottom and making minute turns, but I still had trouble in the corners. It's more Simcade than Arcade. It's a shame I can't get a feel for it because I want to like it. This may be the best Toge racing game this side of initial D arcade stage, but that's not saying much. Next is a game I featured heavily on this channel, Need for Speed Hot Pursuit 2 for the PlayStation 2. It's mostly a good game. I really like the turn of the millennium list of cars featured, such as the BMW Z8, the Lamborghini Murcielago, and the Ford Focus, er, er, I mean Ford TS50. Playing the game whenever the cops are chasing you is some of the most fun and intense racing gameplay you'll ever experience. But when you strip away the traffic and the cops, it's a completely different story. One of frustration and rubber banding. No other racing game has such blatant levels of rubber banding. It's so annoying to be ahead only to have the opponents catch up to you, and one wrong move sends you to the back of the line. The races without the cops elevated the faults with this game. It also turns out that my videos of this game have tanked on this channel, garnering a mixed response from you all. We'll revisit this game some other time because you just don't leave a job half done. 46 County, vehicle to drop at an elevated speed. In position. Requesting assistance. 46 County, he's taken out another vehicle. I also briefly went back to Need for Speed Underground, and, ladies and gentlemen, we have another contender for the worst rubber banding in any racing game. Good stuff first, though. The cars and car customization are still the highlight of the game, even if the customization looks whack in the 2020s. It still controls well, and the music adds to the atmosphere. Then we get to the rubber banding in this game, and this is where the last third of the campaign falls apart. I only got halfway through the game before stumbling across some internet advice telling me to stop playing before reaching the end just because of how stupidly difficult this game gets. It's not just the track design or the traffic placement that gives you unnecessary hang time. HANG TIME! It's the dirty, cheating AI. Need for Speed AI of the time gives Midway AI a run for its money. I wanted to finish this game, but I just couldn't get myself to do it since the difficulty just spiked so much. Next up is Burnout 3 Takedown. The only reason I haven't gone back to it? I beat it. But let's reflect on the ride to all golds in the World Tour. Sure, there's rubber banding, but the takedown mechanic maintained balance since you can just shove your opposition for trying to overtake you. It's so satisfying. The hardest parts of the game were the face-off events and the burning laps. Burning laps, understandably, since you cannot afford to make a mistake if you want a gold medal lap time. Face off, it's just a one-on-one -on -one that makes the rubber banding worse if you screw up. Everything else, though, mwah, it's near perfection. The racing, road rage, and crash modes are all fantastic. You get hidden unlockables just by playing the game. 
You get to blow off steam by taking out your frustration on the other racers. It's great! If I hadn't already beaten this game, I might make videos about it. Next is Extreme G3. Now, it's no secret that I like F-Zero with its twisted anti-gravity racing and great music, so maybe I'd like XG3. Well, no. It does have twisting and turning racetracks, techno trance music, and the ability to break the sound barrier, but it just didn't handle well for me. Maybe that's because I'm not using any of the controllers meant for this game. I was also never a big fan of using weapons in racing games like Wipeout. I'd rather try to win with driving skill than die from a stray bullet on track. It's kind of distracting, especially in a game that requires you to focus on the track and know how to take a turn. This is also another one of these games where I can't get used to the driving model. It feels unresponsive at times, which is the polar opposite of games by Genki. I don't even know if I can say the music's that good either. Well, it can't all be winners. Next up, we have yet another racing game by EA, Shox. Rally racing in video games is really fun, even in the Forza Horizon games. I thought this game looked kind of fun after seeing it mentioned by John Linneman in the Digital Foundry videos about the first few Gran Turismo games. So I gave it a try. And it was so close to greatness. This game falls into a similar situation with Ridge Racer 5. There's not enough meat on its bones. What's here is decent at its core. It's arcade-style rally racing around dirt and snow environments with a bit of early 2000s flair. It also handles very well, being predictably slippery for a rally racing game. I found its shocks zones to not be all that exciting since it seems to be time-based and I just didn't enjoy the races because of the rubber banding. Surprise, surprise. It's also an early PS2 game, meaning that it fits on a CD and not a DVD, leading to limited replay value due to the shallow amount of content. It's another game I really wanted to like, but I felt like the ride would be over as soon as it started. And finally, everyone's favorite racing game that was ruined by its handling model in the West. Alto Mona Lisa. Let's get this out of the way real quick. The art style is phenomenal. I love its cel-shaded manga-style visuals and the rest of its presentation. It also has toge racing. But as you probably heard, the handling model is, well, it's not as god-awful as I originally thought. It certainly plays better than some of the other games I've mentioned, but it's not that good. You lose speed if you do so much as sneeze, making drifting around corners impossible. The camera doesn't also self-center fast enough, throwing your racing line all over the place. It could have turned out completely different. These changes were made when the game was localized for its Western release, adding some additional American cars as a consolation. I'm told its original Japanese handling model was much better, and that the game was otherwise not challenging. But the damage was done, and future print runs of this game in Japan would use the North American releases tweaks under the subtitle US Tuned. I just wish there was a hack out there that restores the handling model of the original Japanese release so I can also drive a Corvette down the Japanese slopes. 
But alas, I can't have my cake and eat it too. many more racing games I can think of that I've wanted to try or have already tried. I'm shortlisting them here so this video doesn't go on for too long, and so you know what deterred me from playing them. Burnout Revenge on the Xbox. Played it for a few weeks, and then went back to Burnout 3. Tokyo Extreme Racer 3. Looks interesting, but is unbeatable in North America due to a bug in localization. We can't have nice things. Burnout 2 Point of Impact. Might feel less tight than 3, but probably still worth a try. Gran Turismo 3, A spec. Ever want to repeat the Sunday Cup 5,000 times? F Zero GX. X is more my style since it's not as hard. F Zero X. 60 FPS capture needs to be seen to be believed. Ridge Racer Type 4. Gotta find a PS1 BIOS file somewhere. Not hard, but not legal either. Gotta be some racing game out there that I either haven't played or doesn't have some massive deal breaker to it, and I don't want to make up any more excuses as to why I'm not playing them. So, do you have any suggestions as to what racing game I should play next, and if I should play it here on this channel? Leave a comment below. Until I find an adequate racing game, this is Squiddy the Kid signing off. Oh, what do you mean I missed the checkpoint? Try, try.